Hello and welcome to Quantum Advisory's investment podcast for Q4 2023. Uh, Here we'll provide a market background covering Q4 2023 and also then go through uh, an an economic outlook and an investment outlook. So we'll start off with the market background. Uh, Here we just outline the key issues uh, concerning markets at the moment uh, globally. So inflation... Um, inflation has been a, a key issue over the, over the last you know two years or so um, with some ha- ha- very high inflation that we've seen um, so over the last 12 months or so inflation uh, continues to trend down uh, across the developed world um, but we're not quite in the clear yet as inflation has ticked up slightly over the last month uh, in the US the eurozone and the UK uh, December CPI came in at 3.4 percent in the US and four uh, percent in the UK. So the the ONS in the UK attributed the higher than expected inflation uh, to a rise in the prices of alcohol and tobacco, and this came at a time when uh, the UK government uh, increased tobacco duty over December, uh, November. Sorry. Um, so in isolation, it doesn't really sound like a cause for concern, but obviously inflation has ticked up um, across uh, the rest of the developed world as well. So, um, you know, we'll have to just, you know, be diligent uh, a, a little bit more going forwards into January and February. So the positives in terms of inflation are that inflation obviously has fallen in recent non- months in light of lower demand and an easing of supply chain issues. Um, it also looks like energy and food price inflation has peaked. Um, and this has been some of the, the primary drivers of the recent high inflation we've seen over the last couple of years. And um, as energy prices have fallen, uh, the place of inflation has eased. Uh, the more negative side of, of, of the inflation uh, area at the moment is uh, strong wage growth, uh, maybe a slight cause for concern as the labour market can, uh, remains tight uh, with unemployment broadly unchanged and also um, job vacancies continue to decline as well. And this may mean that inflation may remain above the Bank of England's 2% target for quite an an extended period of time. So I guess, what does this mean um, for central banks and interest rates going forwards? Um, And when will we start seeing rate cuts? So in the US, uh, it looks like investors are expecting the first rate cuts to come in Q2 of this year. Um, Whereas in the UK, rate cuts are expected to start a little later in the year, you know, in the the latter half of the year, um, with a very gradual decline thereafter. And in the UK, um, it looks like wage growth may be a key factor here. Uh, If if we see low inflation, low wage growth and low economic growth, um, we'd likely start to see, you know, rate cuts um, after that. Um, Also, the Bank of England has reiterated that... uh, investors may be expecting rate cuts a little bit too soon um, as inflation does remain above their two percent target and one of the things um, one of the main things concerning markets at the moment and you know with regards to inflation as well it is still uh, geopolitical risks and um, you know geopolitical risks do remain and the main one at the moment potentially um, is the issues unfolding in uh, the Middle East as Yemen's Iran-backed Houthis are stepping up their strikes on ships in the Red Sea. Uh, so the Houthis have undertaken complex strikes on ships, um, including the use of armed drones and anti-ship missiles. The US and the UK um, have also retaliated uh, by carrying out some attacks on Houthis, uh, Houthi targets uh, of their own. Um, So some ships have already started diverting their routes away from the Suez Canal in favour of the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, The Suez Canal remains uh, a key global shipping route as the the Cape of Good Hope essentially requires ships to revert uh, all the way around uh, down to the south, um, right away around Africa. So, you know, a large large difference there in the time and cost of the... um, of supplying goods to the, to the developed world. So um, obviously an invest, an, an escalation, sorry, in this conflict could put pressure on global supply chains and this could, well, could well 
put pressure on prices as well. So um, yeah, one to watch there and hopefully uh, we do not see an escalation in the conflict there and um, a de-escalation actually would, would be beneficial. Um, one more thing worth noting as well, um, and it's more of an outlook piece really, is, is 2024 will will be a year of elections. So um, it may prove to be the record actually for the most dem- democratic votes globally in a single year. Uh, with voters in the US, the UK, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, uh, Russia and, and many other countries uh, going to the ballot this year. Uh, the Republican Party in the USA, um, with Donald Trump as its likely leader, uh, but just ahead of the, Biden's uh, Democratic Party. Um, and also, meanwhile, um, the Labour Party has a considerable lead in UK polls. Um, so elections will likely grab the headlines going forwards this year um, and, and there'll be some key issues there going forwards. Okay, so what did this mean for investment performance? Um, so starting off with fixed income, uh, bond prices increased over the quarter on this backdrop. Um, this came in light of lower inflation and the expect- expectation sorry, that central banks could start easing uh, monetary policy sometime soon this year. Uh, obviously, that uptick inflation has somewhat changed that. And since the quarter end, uh, bond prices have fell off. Um, so we saw strong performance for gilt and corporate bonds in, uh, in the UK and um, a slight reduction uh, in spreads uh, over the period as can be seen by the chart on the bottom left there. Okay, so moving to the chart on the top left, um, yield curve. So strong performance of gilts was seen across the whole curve, um, which can be seen by the reduction in yields um, across the curve at the top left, uh, moving from the the red line down to the the green line, meaning that uh, bond prices increased across the curve uh, over the quarter. And then moving on to the the inflation curves on the top right there, um, finally we've seen a reduction in guilt implied inflation over the quarter, which is depicted by the chart. Um, And this comes as no surprise uh, given the fall in headline inflation over the quarter. Okay, so moving on to growth assets then, and it, and it was a good uh, a good quarter and also a good year for growth assets. And uh, we've reported the regional equity returns at the bottom right there. So the, the green bars depict the yearly return over 2023, and the, the red bars depict the, uh, the quarterly return over Q4 2023. So um, as we can see, it was a strong, uh, strong quarter actually for uh, equities uh, across the a range of markets, um, with the US and European equities leading the way. And it was a similar story over twenty twenty three as well, as um, equities produced strong returns, and again with with the US and uh, the Euro eurozone, I suppose, leading the way there as well. The US economy has fared better than European economies. Uh, since the pandemic and their trend rate of growth is a little higher as well so that may uh, explain some of the difference there however um, as we can see by the chart at the top left um, which depicts the act, uh, equity returns uh, across the UK global equity and emerging markets over the last three years um, we can see that UK equities have performed quite well over the last three years um, however, this uh, the the performance of UK equity was uh, slightly worse off um, going into this period, so the 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 rebase in there um, has played played a, a part. And if we look at the the volatility um, at the bottom left there as well, uh, volatility has been trending down over the last eighteen months or so. Um, however, it'll be interesting to see if this continues or if it plateaus going forwards. Uh, given that inflation has been falling. Um, however, geopolitical risks remain, uh, which could increase inflation again. And also, um, I guess, as I mentioned, it is a year of elections, so that may cause some volatility there as well. And then finally, just touching on commodities at the top right, um, gold reached record highs uh, over the over the year, and this was largely due to emerging market central bank demand. Um, geopolitical risks as well 
I also played uh, a part in, in uh, increases in prices in gold. And uh, also crude oil prices decreased over 2023. And uh, this was as global markets adjusted. Uh, Russian oil uh, found new destinations outside of the EU, which helped drive prices down. And this was also coupled with uh, generally lower demand as well. Okay, so what does this mean for our economic outlook? Uh, so the economic environment is improving, but risks still remain. Uh, so inflation, in terms of inflation, uh, despite that recent uptick in CPI, inflation has decreased substantially over the last 12 months. Uh, inflation is expected to continue to fall across uh, 2024, as energy bills are expected to come down. Uh, the primary risk here, as I've mentioned, is that political risks could cause inflation to spike once again. Uh, and the events unfolding in the Red Sea are a potential banana skin in that regard if supply chains are severely affected. In terms of economic growth, uh, recession risks remain across the developed world as high interest rates uh, take their toll on growth. Any recessions across the US and, the, and Europe are expected to be quite mild um, and furthermore we can expect to see strong economic growth across many emerging economies this year. Um, in terms of interest rates the Bank of England's base rate has been held at 5.25% since August. Despite the uptick in, in inflation over December in developed economies the market is still pricing in interest rate cuts this year. Uh, before the uptick in inflation Investors expected the Bank of England's base rate to be 4% by the end of this year, uh, and this now seems quite unlikely. However, if inflation falls further and closer to the Bank of England's 2% target, uh, we will likely see uh, the bank reduce interest rates. Alternatively, a spike in inflation uh, will likely keep interest rates higher for longer. So high interest rates mean the cost of borrowing is high. Uh, the good news is that uh, company balance sheets are relatively strong and they can withstand uh, the higher cost of borrowing for the time being. But that said, higher interest rates for an, expended, an extended period of time sorry, uh, may cause distress in certain areas. And finally, we'll touch on what this means for our investment outlook. Um, so, start off with equity. We remain neutral on equity as geopolitical risks and sluggish growth across the developed world remain. Stock and regional selection is key in this area, given high inflation and uh, geopolitical risks. Uh, and we favour areas with resilient pricing and stronger supply chains. Investor optimism has been uh, quite strong following the uh, good performance over 2023, uh, but this can make markets quite vulnerable to overcorrections. Um, and also inflation, interest rates and economic growth uh, will be quite key in determining the performance of equities over 2024. In terms of bonds, we remain positive on UK government bonds and the wider credit market as yields remain attractive by historic standards. So income yields are attractive and interest rate cuts this year could also um, result in capital appreciation. And we believe the direction of travel of inflation will be a key factor here. In terms of UK government bonds, uh, net supply has increased substantially over the last two years. And until now, this increase in supply has been met by equivalent demand as overseas investors and, um, and banks have been attracted by the relatively high yields. And also there's been quite strong performance from the core investors such as uh, pension schemes and insurers in the UK. Our primary concern here is whether the demand uh, will be enough in the future if yields fall um, and this could have a negative impact on prices if demand 
uh, sorry, if supply uh, significantly outstrips demand there. In terms of the wider credit space, uh, investment grade credit looks attractive on a risk adjusted basis as company balance sheets remain strong. However, the combination of high interest rates and increased risk of recession could result in an increase in default risk and a subsequent widening in spreads. Um, so just one to watch out for there. And then finally, uh, alternatives. Uh, we remain positive on alternatives, investments as illiquidity and complexity premiums remain attractive. Um, and in this space, the switch to e-commerce and uh, the transition to a low carbon economy uh, provide uh, some strong opportunities within the sector. Likewise, for many other asset classes, though, inflation, economic growth and interest rates remain key risks here. Um, and higher interest rates for longer uh, could translate into costlier debt, uh, debt servicing, and this might impact growth and returns. Thank you for listening to Quantum Advisory's quarterly investment vodcast. We hope this edition has been informative and provided you with a useful update on the current economic climate. If you would like to discuss any of the topics raised in more detail, then please get in touch with your quantum contact. Once again, thank you and goodbye for now.